Hello everyone and welcome to Adventures in XNA. I am Ardaramus and this is my new Visual Basic game programming tutorial series. Uh, in this we will be focusing on using the XNA framework to get started with game development. Uh, should be a lot of fun. I've shown off some of my projects in uh, recent videos so you guys can kind of uh, see what it is you know we can do with this and of course there's so much more but uh, my goal here is to get everyone started so you can uh, at least get up and going and start making your own games uh, before we get started I want to let everybody know what I am using I'm using uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 Pro you can use the Express version um, uh, there are some limitations to the Express version, I believe, such as project deployment and things like that. But you can still uh, work along and, and produce a project and play your game on your machine. So, um, Just to show you what version I'm on here, uh, if you have any difficulty installing the Windows Phone development kit, the SDK, uh, you may want to update your Visual Studio to Service Pack 1 at least. Um, that is what I'm running on. So before, you, before you're able to actually create an XNA game setup, uh, you will have to have that SDK installed. That allows Visual Basic to take advantage of uh, XNA Game Studio. So. Without that, you may not actually see the XNA projects when you go to create yours. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do is create a brand new project. And after you've installed the uh, Windows Phone SDK, you should have available to you the XNA Game Studio 4.0 for Visual Basic under your templates here. So we want to select the Game Studio 4.0 here and then select Windows Game from the panel on the right. Uh, this will allow us to actually create Windows games. You can also create uh, Xbox 360 games and other things and Windows Phone games, of course. Uh, but we want to create a Windows game. so. I'm going to select that and then I'm going to give my project a name. I will call it Adventures in XNA. Alright, and then when I'm done there, I will hit OK. And it's going to generate a template for me. Alright. Next up, what I'm going to do is go over to my Solution Explorer on the right here and select my Adventures in XNA game. And I will right click on that and go down to Properties. And in here, we want to go to the Compile tab on the left. And we're going to set Option Strict to Off. And what that will do is allow us to be a little more lazy with our math routines and things like that. Um, you know, when you try dividing integers and things like that, there are conversion errors that, you know, if you're not using casting and things like that to uh, convert integers and doubles and things like that, it can, it'll throw errors at you. So this just makes it so uh, all that math will be handled sort of uh, lazy style through uh, Visual Basic. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just save my project there. And then what I will do is some basic cleanup tasks over here in my Solution Explorer. Uh, as your game grows, things are going to, uh, you know, pile up over here in your Explorer, and it's nice to be able to have some sort of system of keeping track of, of things. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a new folder here. I'm going to say add new folder. And this one's just going to be main. And what I'm going to do is 
move uh, my game one dot VBA or VB in there. Sorry, not VBA and uh, program dot VB. And then I will create another folder. And I'm just going to call this one resources and move these icons and this game thumbnail up there. All right. So now we are ready to get started creating our global structure and our game project structure. This is where it starts getting a little more involved and uh, could be kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and right click on our project in the Solution Explorer again. And we will add this time a class. All right, so we're going to make sure class is selected here. And we're going to call this class globals. And this is going to be a very simple class that stores um, basically shared objects to all points of the game. Uh, these will always be in memory and uh, usable by the game and accessible. Very important objects. Uh, it's going to handle our content manager, our graphics device manager, the sprite batch. Uh, it'll keep track of our game time, uh, whether the game window is focused, um, things like that. So let's go ahead and start creating some properties for this uh, class. <clears throat> I'm going to do a public shared content as our content manager. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this so I'm not spending a half hour typing here. All right. So all content will be managed through this property. Um, this will be our graphics, public shared graphics as our graphics device manager. All right. That's another very important one that will handle all of our graphics and our window size and many other things. So, um, though I guess that is uh, it's sort of ambiguous because the next one up is going to be the sprite batch, which is the graphics, I guess you could say. <laughs> That's not, it's kind of hard to uh, explain. Uh, the sprite batch will handle all of our drawing routines and things like that. So uh, this will be as a sprite batch. So we create a public share on that. And the next one up, also extremely important, is our game time. XNA will manage the game time, the entire duration that the game is running, and most all of our uh, animations and things like that will be based off this, as well as update cycles, uh, drawing cycles, everything really in the game will be managed by the game time. So um, next up will be, uh, we'll just say window focused as a boolean and that's just going to track whether or not the window is focused uh, if your game window is focused uh, if it's not focused say you have it minimized in your taskbar or something you don't want it to be handling uh, update events and uh, things like that or you know key input so next up we will do our game size as a vector 2, which is essentially a, uh, I want to say a two-dimensional or, yeah, two-dimensional or one-dimensional point. It's going to be a point on the screen, essentially, uh, marked by an x and y coordinate. So uh, that's what a vector 2 is. And finally, we will do our back buffer 
which is where all of our graphics will be pre-rendered and drawn and then uh, rendered to the screen. So this is going to be a render target 2D. And that's really all there is to the Globals class. And now all of these will be uh, accessible. And there will be, you know, other, a few other classes that are related. Uh, will be sort of global classes that will handle our sound, uh, our actual graphics loading, and things like that. Um, you know, like our tile sets and things. So, uh, Let's see. Next up, 